2019 was a huge year for naked motorcycles. Between brands like Ducati, KTM, BMW, and MV Agusta bringing new flagship models to the world, there's a lot of excitement within the industry. So in this video, I'm going to break down the top 15 naked motorcycles that are out for the 2020 riding year. All of this is based on my opinion, backed by some pseudoscience. But before we jump into the video, let's get an understanding of what a naked motorcycle actually is. Well, it's a standard or a naked motorcycle is usually defined as combining a sports bike with the fairing removed, the wiring tidied up to show off the engine, an upright riding position, handlebar and foot pegs positioned more for comfort, and usually but not always without fairing or windscreen. Without all the extra parts, you'll notice a reduction in more than just weight. The price of a naked bike tends to be lower than their full dressed counterparts. Many of the bikes on this list are available for under $12,000. So without further ado, here is the official list of the top 15 naked motorcycles of 2020. Alright, in 15th place is the 2020 Suzuki GSX S1000. While it may be fun to ride with a 999cc 4-cylinder engine pumping out 150 horsepower and 79.6 pound-feet of torque, it's ugly as sin. I don't care that it has one of the best power to weight ratios on the list at 0.3254 and a competitive price of $11,100. I can't get past all the plastic hanging off the bike and a mixture of extremely sharp lines with too many curves to count. So let's move on to the 14th. In 14th place is the 2020 Kawasaki Z900. Kawasaki's found a sweet spot of value with their Z900. For $9,299, you can pick up a belligerent bike with 125 horsepower and 73.1 pound-feet of torque. That's a solid amount of power for a bike that weighs 467 pounds. In 2020, the bike gets a slew of new upgrades, lighting, a boost in electronic features, full color TFT display, and some tweaks to the frame and suspension. The engine has been left relatively unchanged, but you know what they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. After all of the positive features of the Z900, why is it so far down on the list? Well, it all comes down to the Sagoimi style, and it's just, it's not for me. It looks more like a transformer than a motorcycle, and for that money, I would go to the cooler retro styled Z900 RS Cafe that shares the exact same engine, but puts it in more of a retro themed package. In 13th place is the 2020 BMW F900R. I struggled with where to put this bike on the list. While I love the idea of a more sensible and adult naked bike that I feel is perfect for the BMW to deliver, this one just doesn't hit it for me. With the longer than normal wheelbase, the bike is definitely going to feel planted on the ground, which is a good thing as BMW comes packing with 105 horsepower and 68 pound-feet of torque in a fully wet 465 pound package. What I think really gets me is that while the bike is brand new for 2020, it already looks dated in some aspects. I look at it and my mind goes straight to 007 riding the BMW R1200C Cruiser and Tomorrow Never Dies. I might be one of the only people that does not like the look of this bike, but it's my list and I think it belongs in 13th place. In 12th place, we have the only motorcycle from America and it's just a concept as of right now. If you've not already guessed, it's the Harley Davidson Bronx. I was lucky enough to see the concept bike at the Chicago Motorcycle Show while there were some weird proportions, the bike is still pretty good looking. If I were Harley Davidson, I would have definitely prioritized bringing this and the upcoming Pan America to the market years before the live wire. But back to the bike at hand. This middleweight street fighter rolls with an unapologetic attitude and performance to match. Powering the new Bronx is the 975cc Revolution Max engine that is targeting more than 115 horsepower and more than 70 pound-feet of torque, which does a pretty good job of putting the Bronx in hunting territory of the other middleweight naked bikes. The only reason why the Bronx is in 12th place is because it's only a concept at this point, and we have no idea what the actual performance or styling will look like. In 11th place, we have to head out to Italy to find the MV Agusta Rush 1000. I know right away you're asking yourself, why is such a beautiful bike so low on the list? Well, it's about the value proposition. Will a $45,000 bike give me more smiles than a $10,000 bike? 
As the bike, the Rush 1000 is powered by a revamped 998cc inline four-cylinder found in the Brutale 1000RR that MV Augusta says it's the only production bike to use radial valves and titanium con connecting rods. The Euro 5 compliant engine produces 208 horsepower at 13,000 RPM and 86 pound-feet of torque at 11,000 RPM. To put that into perspective, the Ducati Street Fighter V4 is half the price and delivers the same amount of horsepower with four pound-feet of torque more at a lower RPM. MV Agusa says the bike is an exercise in style, and this is easy to spot with the enclosed rear wheel and all the shiny carbon splattered across the bike. I think it's a stunning motorcycle, it really is, but for $45,000 you could fill a garage with motorcycles and for that reason, it's placed firmly in 11th place. In 10th place is the smallest bike on the list, but it could easily be in 1st place if this list was talking about the best bike to learn how to ride on. Of course we're talking about Yamaha's MT-03. After a few successful years of sales in Europe, Australia, and several Asian countries, Yamaha decided it's time to bring the MT-03 to the USA. What's cool about this bike is it's basically a more upright naked YZF-R3. It shares the same 321cc parallel twin engine with a balancer that's found in the R3, along with 37mm KYB inverted forks and preload adjustable single shock attached to a long swing arm. Inspired by the YZF R1. Anti-lock brakes are standard. My only gripe with the bike is the design of the headlamp. Why does it look like a transformer about to suck down a sausage? But when we're talking about a bike that costs $4,600, it's hard to find anything that comes close to this in terms of value. In 9th place, you get the big brother of the MT-03, the MT-09, which after spending a few weeks aboard it in Germany, I can tell you it's one of the best values on the market, while also sounding like a very angry weed whacker. Originally named the FZ09, its history began in 2014, where it was one of the first in a wave of naked bikes from the manufacturers that finally gained acceptance with the public buying it in the USA. It was followed by major updates in 2017 that addressed suspension gripes we had in previous model years. In 2019, the FZ was renamed the MT-09 to align with the Yamaha's global market, and that's how it remains for 2020. It's still equipped with the same sporty chassis, adjustable suspension, 847cc triple, and a $9,000 MSRP. This hypernaked will continue to have a firm grip on the public's hearts, and mine own. There's also an MT-09 SP, where the SP stands for special. No joke. Anyway, for a little bit of more money, you can get a mechanically adjustable Owens at the rear and an adjustable KYB fork up front. I think you're in the market for a naked bike, it's hard not to consider the SP. In 8th place, you get a Honda's answer to Yamaha's MT-07, the CB650R. This bike is part of Honda's Neo Sports Cafe family that also includes the CB1000R and CB300R that I've written in previous videos. For 2020, the CB650R ABS includes ABS, Honda selectable torque control, LED lighting, and a sporty four-cylinder engine that redlines at 12,800 RPMs. It's a wonderful bike that could be perfect fit for someone who has grown out of their first bike and is looking for a little more excitement without going crazy. In 7th place is one of my favorite bikes of all time. I say it because I used to own it, the Yamaha MT-07 ABS. The MT-07 is a splashy yet affordable entry point to middleweight naked bikes. Its edgy bodywork is intentionally spare, focusing attention on the bike's mechanicals. These include a 689cc parallel twin nestled inside a tubular steel frame, a rackish 2 into one exhaust system, racing styles thin spoke wheels, and a gull wing swing arm. The motor turns a 6-speed gearbox in chain final drive and features a 270-degree crosswind crankshaft for good power delivery and an interesting sound and vibration character. After owning this bike for two years, my only gripe was the lack of available suspension tuning. I said this multiple times during some of my first moto vlogs, but if Yamaha built an MT-07 SP, it would be the perfect bike for a lot of people out there, including me. Wonderful torque paired with a solid suspension would make it a dream ride. In 6th place, we have Honda's biggest and baddest naked bike. The CB1000R is Honda's ultimate expression of a stripped-down, bare-naked, all-out street performance, and it's easily one of the most attractive street bikes I've seen roll out from a Honda showroom. 
Loaded with all the bells and whistles, the ride-by-wire equipped Honda employs traction control and adjustable engine power modes that are tweaked through a tasteful looking digital display and a logically designed switchgear. This allows riders to tune the 2006-2007 generation CBR1000RR inline 4 engine, making it more friendly to wield on the road. For $13,000, you're getting a 998cc inline 4 that's capable of producing 143.5 horsepower at 10,500 rpm and 76.7 pound-feet of torque at 8,250 rpm. Even though the bike's engine is pushing 15 years of existence, the bike feels like it's a brand new design. For such a large bike, it handles like a bike half of its size, and it was extremely easy for me to thread this bike through the streets of Berlin, Germany, when Honda Germany lent me the bike. The only reason the bike is not higher up on the list is that it's got some pretty old pieces on it matched up with some no new pieces. I can't wait to see what Honda brings to this bike to the market as the current CBR1000RR Fireblade engine. That should give Ducati and KTM quite a run for their money. In 5th place is Kawasaki's $17,000 ZH2. Kawasaki leads the world in supercharged motorcycle engines, and for 2020 Team Green added a Hyper Naked to the mix. Supercharging an engine compresses intake air to make it more dense, thereby allowing a greater amount of fuel to enter the combustion chamber and essentially making a bigger bang for more power. Power is rated at 197 horsepower and 101 pound-feet of torque. Now, along comes the least expensive H2 to top Kawasaki's Z line of naked motorcycles as the ZH2. Its MSRP is relatively inexpensive at 17,000, and the Z line's flagship continues the formula of a supercharged 998cc four cylinder engine, trellis steel frame, premium components, and a host of rider aids. An IMU feeds into a plethora of electronics, including traction control, cornering ABS braking, launch control, ride modes, and a quick shifter, and even electronic cruise control. Comprehensive color TFT instrument panel provides scads of information that can be linked to your smartphone via their Rideology app. The ZH2 makes a visual statement with Kawasaki's Sugomi styling that looks aggressive and futuristic. As a hyper-naked bodywork isn't necessarily minimal, the nose section is particularly interesting and flows nicely rearward. The green trellis frame visually pops among the blacked out engine swing arm and bodywork. Also, unlike the Ninja, the ZH2 uses a double-sided swing arm rather than a single-sided unit, a more affordable option that allows, among other things, the Z to come in below the $20,000 mark. The supercharged Z uses a set of Showa suspension with the SFF BP inverted fork at the front and a single shock at the back. Stopping power comes from Brembo with two piston calipers biting into a 290mm disc at the front and two piston calipers clenching a 250mm disc at the back, mounted both on a set of 17-inch start spoke wheels. The Z is also lighter at 527 pounds than to the Ninja it's based off of. Though definitely one of the heaviest bikes in the segment, it's a very interesting bike, but outside of it being supercharged, it's not really for me. In fourth place is an icon of design and one of the founding fathers of the naked motorcycle world. I'm talking about the Ducati Monster 1200S. For 2020, Ducati rolled the Monster 1200S into a paint booth and applied a fresh black on black color scheme. A striking combination of gloss and matte, giving the Testostretta 11 degree V-twin an even more assertive presence. Mechanically, however, this Leader Plus Street Fighter remains unchanged from the previous model year. That's not at all bad. The 803, 821, and 1198cc monsters are some of Ducati's most popular models, and the 1200S is the patriarch of the family. There's a great top and rush, fully adjustable on suspension front and rear to keep that nimble handler well composed, and Brembo 4 piston M50 calibers up front for responsive, reliable stopping performance. In addition to the premium suspension and braking components, the 1200S has a number of upgrades, such as an up-down Ducati quick shifter, a sleek passenger seat cover, a lightweight carbon fiber front fender, LED lighting, and an anti-theft system. The Monster 1200 is powered by Ducati's legendary 1198cc Testa Stretta 11 degree DSL twin. Born from superbike competition, this liquid-cooled 8-valve torque monster has been steadily refined over the last decade. Dual spark ignition and valve overlap techniques boost torque delivery while elevating fuel efficiency and overall engine smoothness. You'll see 147 horsepower at 9,250 rpm and 91 pound-feet of torque fairly low at 7,250 rpm. 
Ducati's contemporary electronic suite allows the rider to tune the power band from mild to wild. Of the three combined engine throttle maps, I preferred the high power setting. Through throttle response remains overly sensitive, especially during more dedicated throttle applications, like a wheelies, adjustable wheelie and traction control help less experienced riders remain in control. However, I preferred riding with these countermeasures disabled. For $17,595, it's really hard to find a better bike. And if I did not already purchase a naked motorcycle on this list for 2020, I would have most likely found one of these to put in my garage. In third place hails from the mountains of Austria and no list of top naked bikes would be complete without it. I'm talking about the 2020 KTM 1290 Super Duke R. The Austrians have been very busy as the bikes have some of the coolest technical innovations and nice convenience features. In addition, there's more horsepower and less weight. KTM is bent on supremacy through speed, so it hasn't spared the 1301cc LC8 motor, which is already one of the motorcycle's world's crown jewels. The updated engine, KTM isn't quite quoting a power figure yet, features titanium intake valves and resonator chambers and revised fuel injectors in a 56mm throttle body to improve torque and fuel economy. KTM repositioned the ram air intake to provide airflow into the combustion chamber and revised the exhaust headers to optimize exhaust flow. The LC8 is renowned for the slick precision of its transmission, but KTM even set the scalpel to that. KTM claims that SDR tips the scales at 416 pounds dry, which is about 15 pounds lighter than the previous generation. KTM shed 1.7 pounds off the engine alone by using thinner casings and another 4.4 pounds came off the frame. The frame itself is all new and to the naked eye resembles the style of that RC8 Superbike made rest in peace. There's also a trick new composite subframe that does away with the exposed trellis of the previous model. To improve stability in rear end squat under acceleration, KTM moved the swing arm pivot 5mm higher and closer to the counter shaft sprocket. The swing arm is also longer to help get all of that power to the ground. On the suspension side, there's an updated 48mm WP fork up front and a new WP rear shock out back that features separate oil and gas reservoirs to keep it as compact as possible. A manual preload dial gets rid of the conventional ramp style adjuster. KTM has dropped the linkless rear suspension design for a new progressive shock linkage that claims to keep on-road compliance while boosting track performance. For lightweight and rigidity, the top triple clamp is made of lightweight forged aluminum. On the electronic side, the 1290 Super Duke R has a set of rider aids to help make the most of its mechanical grip. There's a Bosch 6-axis IMU to manage cornering, ABS, and traction control, and KTM refined its rider modes to be less intrusive. KTM is truly a pioneer in the motorcycle industry, and the devotion to their products are shown year after year. That's why the 2020-1290 Super Duke R is worth every penny of the $18,700 asking price. Now for number 2 on the list of the top 15 naked motorcycles of 2020. Here's a hint. It's just like number 3, except smaller. I'm talking about KTM's Super Scalpel, the KTM 890 Duke R. It's still agile, but with more punch. The KTM 890 Duke R takes all the things we loved about the KTM 790 Duke and really turns it up to 11. It's a no-compromise mid-weight naked bike equally at home on mountain roads as it is on the racetrack, delivering more power, more torque, and more Dukeness than any parallel twin that has come before. KTM 790 Duke dubbed the Scalpel has been well received since its 2017 launch, but hardcore sport riders look down their noses at the bike's merely average suspension and brakes. That's all changed with the introduction of the 890 Duke R, which is everything we hoped for in the 790 and even more. As the bosses of KTM say, it's sharp just got sharper. The 890 Duke R is recognized from its 790 sibling by its top shelf Brembo Stylema monobrock brakes and fully adjustable WP Apex fork, as well as by its orange wheels shod with Michelin's new Power Cup 2 Sport tires. A claimed dry weight of 366 pounds makes it 51 pounds lighter than its 1290 Super Duke R brother. What else did KTM do to increase the 790 to the 890? Well, the first one's pretty obvious. It's a bigger engine. Orange stroke size go up to produce a displacement of 889 cc's. Bigger valves and a higher compression ratio helps bump horsepower 16 ponies to a perpetrated 119 at 9,250 RPMs, 250 revs higher than the 790's peak. Meanwhile, the added displacement pays torque dividends, producing an additional 9 pound-feet 250 RPMs earlier than the 790, now up to 73 pound-feet. 
The frame remains the same aside from the new orange color, but the suspension is all new, and with a certain upgrade from the somewhat flaccid and minimally adjusted units on the 790 Duke, WP's latest Apex suspension graces the 890 Duke R. The Apex shock includes provisions for adjusting high and low speed compression dampening as well as rebound dampening. A hydraulic preload adjuster is a handy feature for setting up a bike for various loads. The new suspension and its greater wheel travel, travel of 5.5 and 5.9 inches front and rear have an effect on the chassis geometry. Rake extends slightly from 24 to 24.3 degrees, while a trail goes from a scosh from 98 to 99.7 millimeters. Together with a wheelbase stretched to hair from 58.1 to 58.3, the 890 Duke R should have a tad extra stability. The seat height lifts from 32.5 to 32.8 inches. Another sweet upgrade is the addition of Brembo's wonderful Stylema monoblock brake calipers, addressing one of the 790's few weak points, biting on 320mm rotors. Other nice bits are Brembo's MSC radial pump master cylinder with adjustable level ratio, and braided steel brake lines. The brake system is preparedly more than 2 pounds lighter than the 790's components, and IMU uh, informs a Bosch 9.1 mega MP controller to provide cornering ABS and switchable traction control. As optional track modes add another level of TC to the three level adjustable TC in the stock bike. Ergonomics are slightly racier as its tapered aluminum handlebar is lower and the footbags are higher and further rearward. The handlebar located is customizable to four positions via its mounting triple clamp as well as by rotating it. The fuel tank remains unchanged, still at 3.7 gallons. KTM says that the 890 Duke R has lost 6.6 .6 pounds compared to the 790 Duke, bringing its dry weight down to a petite 366 pounds. That's an incredible 51 pounds lighter than the new Super Duke R, which should make the new 890 incredibly swift down on twisty canyon roads. Downside, the 890 Duke R won't make it to our shores until late fall of next year as a 2021 model. We anxiously await. This is literally the only reason why I did not purchase the KTM 890 Duke car because I wanted it for this summer and honestly did not want to wait for a model year 2021 to get it. Now, for the top naked motorcycle of 2020. The top naked motorcycle of 2020 is the Ducati Street Fighter V4S. You may ask yourself, what is a Street Fighter V4? Well, it's a Panigale V4 stripped of its fairings with high wide handlebars. This in short is what Ducati calls the fight formula. It may seem like the simple but a lot of time and effort were put into deciding the exact bend and rise of this one piece handlebar and more comfortable riding position. Then the engineers crafted a new Panigale inspired front headlight pod with LED running lights and placed the 5 inch TFT dash from which you can monitor the various electronic functions deployed on both models. A comfortable seat creates the perfect perch for riders as they shred their way from their favorite roads or tracks in some serious Italian style. Both versions are built around the same frame and chassis with the 208 horsepower, 1103 cc Desmo Sedici Stradale 90 degree V4 engine providing the power. The Panigale V4 and now the Street Fighter V4 feature the front frame designs that use the engine as a stressed member of the chassis, uncovered by the sinister looking lines in the minimalistic bodywork. The base model Street Fighter V4 will come equipped with fully adjustable Showa suspension, while the V4S ups the ante with electronically adjustable Owens Nix 30 forks and TTX 36 shock. The V4 roll on 5 spoke alloy wheels, the most conspicuous way of differentiating between the models from a distance. The 3 spoke uh, forged aluminum alloy wheels for the V4S. Both bikes will shod with the Pirelli Diablo Rosa Corsa 2 rear tires and will be offered in the signature red colorway only. Stare at the images long enough and you'll see that the biplane style aerodynamic winglets being utilized on both models. Ducati claims that these functions by producing more than 60 pounds or 28 kilograms of downforce at 165 miles per hour, which in turn reduces the bike's tendency to lift the front wheel under acceleration, which in turn reduces the amount of electronic intervention necessary to keep the front end down. The winglets are also supposed to improve the bike's stability during turn-in while on the brakes, plus they look pretty interesting too. The Street Fire V4 adds an element of comfort into the superbike style performance thanks to the repositioned footbags, the aforementioned one-piece bars, and a comfortable seat that is easy on your backside. The passenger perch rests on a steel subframe that allows a bit more room than was found on the previous model. And for this and so much more, the Street Fighter V4 and V4S are the ultimate naked motorcycle of 2020. Now, to reflect back on the list, this is obviously based on my own opinions and experiences so there might be things that you would change on your list. 
So in the comments below, I would love to hear what your top 15 naked motorcycles of 2020 would be. Would you shuffle the Kawasaki ZH2 to the top? Would you have included Yamaha's MT-10? I might be missing a great bike completely, so let me know in the comments. I might make a version 2 of this list if people throw out some more good ideas. But that's it for now. Thank you for watching this video at the very end, and if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and to click the bell so you will always know when I upload new videos to the interwebs. Now, go out there and ride safe!